In this video, I'm going to show you 10 details that you probably missed in the Mass Effect trilogy. Keep watching to see them all. Hanging in space with a jazz trio. Now coming with the bass. What's up, everyone? Big Dan here. Before we begin, I have a bunch of different Mass Effect trilogy guides and lore videos on my channel, so if you're interested in seeing more, hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Number 1. Legion's Lesser Known Reveal During the Reaper IFF mission, we'll meet our geth friend Legion for the first time. He's revealed to us in a big scene where he saves Shepard from a couple of husks and then calls out to us. Shepard Commander. But if you're quick, you can actually spot Legion earlier in the mission. Right after this scripted event where a husk is sniped in front of us, if you make your way around the corner and zoom in with a sniper rifle, you can actually see Legion walking along the catlocks in the background. Number 2. Shepard gets too drunk at Purgatory All work and no play makes Shepard a dull commander, but fortunately there are many bars and clubs for you to unwind in during the Mass Effect trilogy. But going too hard can lead to some embarrassing public drunkenness, which you can discover in Mass Effect 3. If you head to the Purgatory Bar and have a drink three times in a row, this will trigger a short cutscene where Shepard wakes up on Arya's couch. If you head back for three more drinks, you'll wind up on your ass in the elevator. Sleep it off, Commander. We've still got a war to win. Number 3. Fate of the Krogan Poet While exploring Ilium in Mass Effect 2, you may discover a Krogan reciting poetry to himself several feet away from his Asari girlfriend. For if our love is to survive, it must grow thorns to pierce the hand of any that would uproot it. If you speak with the Asari, she's having some doubts about a long-term commitment with him. But with some encouragement from the commander, she will agree to give him a chance. But it's tough. I like him a lot. Hell, I love him. But I don't know if he's permanent bond material. Not with blood rage. Look at him. He's obviously crazy about you. If you think that's the end of the story, you'd be wrong. You can actually encounter these characters again in Mass Effect 3, although the outcome is much more tragic. While exploring the tunnels during the Rachni mission, you may come across a dead Krogan hidden behind some webbing. Shepard recovers a data pad from his body. Looks like a last message. He's asked that it be delivered to an Asari named Ereva on the Citadel. This was the Krogan Poet. If you bring the datapad to Ashira on the Presidium Commons, you can hear his last poem to his Asari partner. Excuse me. I'm sorry. You need to hear this. Oh, Blue Rose of Ilium. If these humble words reach you, then I have joined my ancestors. No. No, no, no. My dream was to be by your side, a weed beside your beauty, twining together in the warm Tachanka sun. Oh, Char. But though you needed room to grow, still, I will remember the perfume of the scent and the soft touch of your petals. Oh. If my heart could not shelter you from the storm, then let my broken bones build a wall around your garden so you can grow safe and happy. Thank you. Uh, I should... I need to go. Number 4. Joker's Habits On a lighter note, let's talk about Joker, everyone's favorite brittle bone pilot. In Mass Effect 2, if you hang around the cockpit long enough, 
Joker will provide some randomized commentary and even roast the commander for standing over his shoulder. Commander, can I get a mirror up here, you know, so I can see when someone is standing behind me? Well, perhaps Joker needed some alone time because you may overhear him interacting with some interesting media. <laughs> ah, sorry, that was supposed to go to my earpiece. <laughs> it took me like 20 minutes to trigger this one, so you're welcome. Number five, Commander Shepard is a Vorcha? The Vorcha are a race of scavengers and mercenaries first introduced to the franchise in Mass Effect 2. But did you know that these characters are voiced by Mark Mir, the same guy who plays the male Commander Shepard? So when you're arguing with any Vorcha character, it's kind of like Shepard is arguing with himself. Then collectors make us strong! I've had enough of this. <sighs> collectors want plague! Mad props to Mark Mir for the range of talents in his VO work. Number six. Have you ever seen an Elcor walk? Throughout the Mass Effect trilogy, we'll encounter a number of Elcor characters, the gentle giants of the galaxy. But in all cases, they're just hanging out in a single spot, and we never get to see them move. Except for one scene in Mass Effect 2. When you meet up with Anderson on the Citadel, you can spot an Elcor walking across the Presidium in the background of the scene. As far as I know, this is the only time we see an Elcor walking in the entire Mass Effect trilogy. Number 7. Baldur's Gate References Bioware's first major franchise was Baldur's Gate, a Dungeons & Dragons fantasy RPG that sold millions of copies in the late 90s and early 2000s. Even today, Baldur's Gate 2 is considered one of the greatest RPGs of all time. So it's only natural that Bioware would include some easter eggs and references to their OG classics in other franchises like Mass Effect. There are a number of easter eggs I could point out, but I'll just focus on two for this video. In Mass Effect 2, you can purchase a space hamster from the pet store on the Citadel. This is a reference to Boo, faithful friend of our ranger companion Minsk, who himself is probably the most memorable character in all of Baldur's Gate. Stand and deliver, that my hamster might have a better look at you. When we meet Minsk for the first time, he introduces us to his hamster friend Boo, which he refers to as the only miniature giant spaced hamster in the realm. The next reference is during the Leviathan DLC, where Edie talks about the Basilisk, a notorious enemy type from Baldur's Gate. The Basilisk had a gaze attack, which could instantly turn your characters into stone and wipe out your entire party in a few short rounds, making them hated amongst the Baldur's Gate player base. Edie, what project was Garno working on when he found the artifact? Basilisk. Got anything on Basilisk? Several ships, a mythical creature, and a rare mid-tier enemy type in the Galaxy of Fantasy video game. It possesses a gaze attack capable of triggering synced animation kills. Player forms describe it as overpowered. I meant the project, Edie. Oh. Then, no. Number 8. Joker's Sister. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you may already know about this one. In Mass Effect 3, we learn that Reapers invaded the colony of Tiptree, where Joker's dad and sister live. Joker won't hear any news from his family, and asks Liara to look into it for him. You asked for news about the human colony, Tiptree? Hey, Liara, you don't need to worry about that right now. Now's as good a time as any. I'm getting reports of refugee ships from Tiptree landing on Solarian colonies. I don't have names. I'm sorry. It was mostly children. Well, Gunny, um, Hillary, my sister, G Gunny's a nickname she's had it since, uh, she's only 15, so if it's children, then maybe I only lost my dad. Kind of an asshole thing to hope for. Jeff, right now, take any kind of hope you can get. The unfortunate truth is that Joker's sister, Hillary, was killed by an Asari commando during the Reaper attack on Tiptree. We can overhear these details from two Asari conversing in Huerta Memorial Hospital on the Citadel. There are eight different conversations you can overhear, which detail how the Asari commando defended Hillary and some other colonists from a Reaper attack. Unfortunately, Hillary was badly injured in the encounter, and the Asari killed her to prevent a Banshee from discovering their hiding spot. 
She was coming closer with those dead black eyes. And Hillary, the farm girl, she couldn't stop crying. They were gonna hear. What did you do? What do you think? You saved a lot of lives. And I killed those farmers. They were indoctrinated. You had to defend yourself. And as for Hillary... No, you idiot. When I took a shower and left my gun in the bedroom, I killed them. She's now suffering from PTSD because of her actions. It's pretty dark stuff. Could I get that gun now? I'll see what I can do. Number 9. Daniels and Donnelly Romance Ken Donnelly and Gabriella Daniels are part of Normandy's engineering crew in Mass Effect 2. The two of them have been inseparable for most of their careers, but somehow they're not dating. Gabby and Ken would make a great couple. I just doubt they'll ever realize it. Well, all that can change in Mass Effect 3. Provided you save them from the Collectors, you can reinstate them onto the Normandy, where they'll have much more banter. Ken will mostly comment on other women, and shows a particular interest in Edie. So, Gabby, have you seen Edie's new body? Ah, oh, I knew this was coming. I just mean, it's an amazing work of engineering. Elastic titanium silicon polymers, ultra-light harmonic phased power cells. Mm-hmm. And if she ever accidentally walks into a wall, there's just so much... padding. Ugh, oh, I knew it. Wish I were a wall. You pretty much are, Kenneth. Eventually, Gabby will call Ken out on his BS, and demand to know why he never talks about her body. Kenneth, you comment on every woman's figure but mine. Well, I... What? You don't like my legs? Gabby, it's you. You know? No, chicken shit, I don't know. All you do is make stupid sexist comments to avoid saying anything real. Gabby, now's not the time. We've got work to do. Responsibilities. We're not fighting this war for ourselves, Donnelly. We're fighting for the people close to us. Time is short. I see your point, Commander. Gabby, I think your legs are spectacular. Well, that's a start. If you support Gabby in the argument, you can find them having a more intimate moment in the engineering bay after the Horizon mission. Oh, hello, Commander. We were just uh, double-checking the thermal ducts. I'm sure you were. Carry on. Number 10. Probing where? Okay, so many of you might have already seen this one, but to exclude this easter egg from the list just feels wrong. Planet scanning was a new gameplay feature added in Mass Effect 2. Shepard could launch probes to any planet to retrieve resources or locate quest objectives. Edie would notify us anytime we launched a new probe. Probe away. But if we head to the local cluster and launch a probe on the planet Uranus, Edie will give us quite a different reaction. Really, Commander? Probe Uranus. I also find it hilarious that the planet's resources are depleted. I wonder what that says about the proclivities of the developers. Huh. So there you have it. 10 details you may have missed in the Mass Effect trilogy. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go. The Normandy is a ship. Edie is a collection of processing hardware contained in that ship. Those are two separate things. Doesn't the existence of the Reapers contradict that? So what do you think, Edie? Are we more than our thoughts? I'm done. Any more of this and my head's gonna explode.